Welcome to the JACO Report. I'm Charles JACO. At eight weeks gestation, a human embryo is the size of a small peanut and weighs the same about as three raisins. A lot of women don't even know they're pregnant at eight weeks. But under a tough new anti-abortion law in Missouri, having an abortion after eight weeks is now a crime. Missouri's re one remaining abortion clinic on Forest Park Boulevard in St. Louis says they will obey the law according to Planned Parenthood. But as we report exclusively in the North Sider and South Sider newspapers, prosecutors in St. Louis City and County will refuse to enforce this new law and will not prosecute anyone under it. Now, according to the law, a woman cannot be prosecuted for having an abortion, but anyone who assists her, like a doctor, faces 15 years in prison. There are no exceptions for rape or incest. Now, the law is clearly unconstitutional under Roe v. Wade, which is why the mostly white, male, rural GOP supermajority in Jefferson City passed it in the first place. They wanted to go to the U.S. Supreme Court with the hope of overturning Roe v. Wade and making abortion illegal again. One of those in the legislature who spoke out against this law joins us today. She's State Representative Lakeisha Bosley. She represents the 79th House District in the city, which runs from Gravoy on the south side to I-70 on the north side, and encompasses neighborhoods including Jeff Vanderloo and Fox Park. This is her first term in the legislature. Representative Bosley, thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, as a, as a freshman, as a, as a first timer in the ledge, yeah. when you saw a law like this that obviously was clearly unconstitutional in the face of it, yeah. clearly uh, called for uh, making abortions illegal when a lot of women don't know they're pregnant at all, yes. and was jammed through uh, the legislature, just as as a newbie to the entire process, oh how did how did it strike you? I, it was it's heartbreaking, is what it is. It's heartbreaking. It's infuriating. It's all of these things that you think you go through every series of emotion when you hear and see something like this. Um, just because, as a woman, you know, I was the only black woman from the city of St. Louis in the Missouri House of Representatives, and I didn't get an opportunity to speak on it during perfection, nor did I get an opportunity to speak on it in its TAFP. Um, I think that it is a gross overreach of this uh, majority populated 75% male uh, legislative body um, to dictate what 50, over 50% 50 of women in the state of Missouri um, would like to do with their bodies. It's, it's my body, it's for me to do, and it's for me to say, and it's not for you. You don't, you can't do this. You can't conceive. You don't know what it feels like. You don't know what it feels like to have those moments of, you know, what is going to happen? Do I want to do this? But to have that statement within itself to have the audacity to reach into my world and tell me what's best for me without even considering me is far worse than anybody. It's a tyrant, is what it is. Uh, did, did it strike you that the arguments that were made in favor of it were essentially a smokescreen, maybe in bad faith, because the, the supporters of this bill yeah. uh, just kept going back to the sanctity of life as if they were redefining life on the fly yeah. <laughs> rather than get, and and completely ignored the concerns yeah. of of women who said wait a minute you know what am i a brood mare you're going to force me to carry a baby to to term even if i don't wish it what is going on here on the other side was did you pick up any inkling that this is not the right thing to do? Or did they retreat behind that wall of, you know, life begins at conception and so we don't want to hear anything? You had some, but you did have one really brave Republican vote against this, which is Shamit Dogan. He voted against this and he said, you know, this is not right. Um, he, you know, he believes in what he believes in. He is that, but this is an extreme measure. This is something that takes us to a very, very, very far point that I don't think any of us knows and wants to be there. Uh, for us to even consider this in itself is absolutely outrageous, but for us to actually pass it is more devastating than anything. It's just, you know, you have young girls, we, we are reading these stories in Ohio and these other places and these other states that have passed similar legislation where you have an 11 year old who was raped by her uncle or by her cousin and she conceived. And now you're saying that I'm gonna punish her 
because she should have never gotten pregnant. No, the situation should have never happened. She should have never been assaulted. She should have never been hurt to begin with. And now you're going to force her most vulnerable day on her every day of her life. Do you get the feeling that this is just the beginning, that maybe they'll go after contraception next? It, well, there is always, there is always, always, always that in the back of your mind. Because comedian Samantha B noted it's, on her show said, you know, I'm not joking, I bought up all the plan B pills I could find you have to. against the day when yeah. they make it illegal. I mean, are you afraid that we are heading toward an area where The Handmaid's Tale is gonna become a documentary? If this is the blueprint, then yes. There, that it could be a very big possibility. And I say that because you have no exceptions within this, this abortion ban. You have no exceptions within this heartbeat bill. You have no exceptions. There are no exceptions. I, I, I want people to really understand that. There are no exceptions when it comes to that. I mean, there are ex exceptions of health if, it, if, it, if the mother is on her way out, um, if she's going to die in some way. That's an exception. If the doctor or the physician says, yes, this is detrimental to your health, then we can induce an abortion. Those sort of things. But if there is no exceptions for rape and incest, what makes us think that they are abortion or a, a plan B or a contraception is off the radar? Well, can you explain to me um, the, I, the, the thinking as you understand it yeah. of, of the supporters behind this? I mean, they talked about pro-life. Did you get a feeling that there was any other um, motive it's okay. behind it's, this? It's to overturn Roe versus Wade. It's to overturn the Supreme Court. It is to overturn this, this, this case, which ultimately made abortion legal for us. It gave us an opportunity as women to have a choice of our own lives. The thing is, is you may not be pro-life for, you, you may be pro-life for yourself, but it doesn't give you the authority or the right to tell someone else what they can and cannot do. This is another form of slavery. I was a little surprised in that you, you have a legislature here yeah. who have decided that it is government overreach yeah. to regulate deadly weapons. It is government overreach to require someone to require to wear a helmet while they're riding a motorcycle. Yeah. It is not government overreach to insert the government almost literally yeah. into a woman's womb. Um, Pro life. Did, did right? you did you bring that up to, to any of your colleagues and ask? You know, you keep talking about limited government, and now you have sucked the, this the power of the state yep. into the most intimate decision a woman can make. We've had multiple conversations. And you what, can go what was back their and, answers? You can go back and roll the clips on the floor. It yeah. still went back to we believe life is uh, it, where it begins at conception. And my thing is this: What about life after? What about when the baby comes? Do you not know that there are a lot of children in foster care right now who needs parents, who are struggling, who are hurting, who are, and some who have run away because the system within itself is so detrimental to them mentally and physically that they can't even stay, they run away. They have to escape. But pro-life is supposed to be all life, but we're not worried about all life. We had to fight for funding for Harris Stowe. We have to fight for funding for Harris Stowe every single year. And these are kids who are living here, who want to learn, who want to get a job, a really good paying job, who want to have access to health care, and yet we're making it difficult to, for them to even get that and obtain that knowledge. Is this abortion bill part of the larger culture war, in quotes? I say that because it was often said that the three tenants for rural white conservatives were God, guns, and gays, and yeah. now that the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage, it's God, guns, and gynecology. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, did you get the feeling that this was about abortion, but at the end of the day, it was about something bigger that is a view of the world where we think, you know, all these godless liberals in urban areas have ruined the country and we're going to take it back? I, I think that it is going to put us back. It has already started, but what I believe is a good thing that has come out of this 
is that we're having conversations. People who normally would have never talked to each other, Republican and Democrat a lot, are having the intense conversations. Were there any say, Republicans you spoke to who were, were horrified by this? And there are a few. There are a few, but, you know, you cannot not vote the way that your party wants you to on some things. And I personally don't agree with that. I agree that you should be able to vote your conscience. Mm -hmm. Vote your conscience. So you had some Republicans tell you, we think this is awful, but we're going to vote for it anyway? You have that. Yeah. That has happened. That has happened. And it's, it is... It is shocking within itself because if we are supposed to be who we are and we're supposed to be here to represent our constituents and our people, this is not the way that you do it. This is not a representation of what people want in their legislative body is for you to tell me what I can and can't do with my own autonomy. How much of your time as a legislature, or how much of the legislature's time in yeah. general, is spent on matters of substance that were traditionally part of the legislative purview? In other words, economic development, um, infrastructure, that sort of thing, versus you know abortion, gun control, um, you know uh, statements about you know the liberal elites Leaks. destroying us. How, how much of your time oh, is okay. spent? on real matters versus nonsense. We spent so much time wasted the legislative session. I've talked to past legislators, I've talked to legislators who were there with me this go around who were there last session and they are shocked by how slow we were going and how we really didn't have really intense, a lot more intense debates and battles. It was, it's almost scary, but I say it's a good thing too because the more time that we slow down, the, 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 the time that it takes for us to pass bad legislation is cut off. So I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I just hoped that we could have put this <laughs> abortion ban in the, for, in the back of that bad legislation that did not get passed this year. We had a lot of interesting things. We had the CAFO bill. Um, we Which had was... um, the confined animal uh, feeding operations where you, major corporations will be able to come in and overturn small farmers at this point. We just made it super easy for Tyson's and your huge foreign government uh, owned feeding facilities, animal run farming facilities to come into our, to our state and take over. And no, hardly anybody heard a word about that. They, they heard, we heard about it and I had many rural constituents contact me and say thank you for fighting against this. My thing is it's a local control issue. If these counties and the, the elected officials in these counties want to have health ordinances. And mind you, we're talking about 20, 20 counties who passed health ordinances out of 114. We just made a law legal because of 20 counties who didn't want this. Tell me. That is a local control issue. Allow these allow the elected officials who live there, who the people elected on that local level, to work. <laughs> I, but given that, you've got a Republican, a again, a white male rural yeah. Republican supermajority that seems to have an agenda that goes beyond abortion, and that agenda seems to be if a large corporation wants something, we're going to give it to them. Um, if it involves anybody trying to get in, get in the way of that, yeah. we are going to ignore it, uh, and we are going to try to overturn the will of the people, like the Clean Missouri legislation yes. on both redistricting and, and ethics laws. If you put all of this together and then add this abortion bill, yeah. don't you get the picture of a legislature that is essentially in the pockets of a very few rich people and is passing a lot of this nonsense like this abortion law just to wave the bloody flag in, in, fr in, in front of the in front of the crowd at home and say that we were one of them yeah we were one of them in other words it's a scam yeah it's 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 to see who can keep up who can stay in the and i believe that some of some of my colleagues republican colleagues actually believe 
and what they're voting for. And if you actually believe in what you're voting for, I am okay with that. Even though I don't think that it's okay, I am okay with that because you actually believe it. How, much, how many of them do you think vote for this stuff and don't believe in it at all, but they're just there for the money? I, <laughs> there are a few. There are a lot. <laughs> I can't, and I don't know all of them, but I, I would say that there are some who actually believe in what they, what, what, what they are voting on. And there are some who are like, I disagree with this, but I am going to vote for it. And I, and I think that that should not be who we are. And it, it is more so about a character situation than it is about you actually voting for something. Because if you want to go to the next level, if you want to become the next senator or congresswoman or a congressman, then you don't do this. You, you don't go to this extreme. You don't have to do it. Now, this is your first elective office. Yes, this is my first and, elective And you are office. 26. You're 26. Yeah. You know, how does this affect someone who is a freshman's gone into public service? Yeah. You, you know, even though you you come from a, a political I've been family, I've public service my whole life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you uh, go into public service. You're only 26. Yeah. And then you see almost quite literally this this swamp um, of entrenched interests that seem to be operating against the will of the people, certainly against the will of your constituents. Yeah, of course. It would seem to me that cynicism could set in pretty quickly and you might just throw up your hands and say, no, this isn't worth it. No, we cannot do that. That is that is not who I am. That is not who I was elected to be. That is not what I ran on. I don't care how hard we have to fight. I, we're going to do it. We got a civil rights bill passed. I got a civil rights bill passed, um, you know, for restitution for the wrongfully convicted. Um, language now that increases the rate from $50 to $100. So now you, for a year of your life, if you're wrongfully incarcerated, you get $36,500 a year. That to me, even though it may be small, that is a win. That is okay. We can get it done. It wasn't there before. No, it makes me hopeful. It makes me proud to say that we can get this. Senator Carla May um, actually passed a really good piece of criminal justice reform. You had Senator Kiki Curls with the expungement as well. Uh, Senator Jamila Nasheed. There are a lot of great things that are getting done. And even though I'm saying senators, you had a lot of representatives as well pass some really good legislation, really good laws. So we can't give up. That doesn't, just because it's a hard battle to fight, I won't give up. We cannot give up. We have to continue to go. And that's why at 26, I'm telling every 17 year old, 17 and a half, as you like to say, go out and register to vote because you can register to vote six months until your 18th birthday. You can register, get registered now, get involved now. Those who are 35 or convicted felons who are, are now out off of probation, off of parole, they can register to vote. You can vote. You don't know how many times I went and knocked on doors this past uh, election cycle, and I heard, I'm a felon. I can't vote. It's like, no, yes, you can. You, you have that right to vote. And they're like, really? Yes. I've registered so many felons over this past summer, it now makes me think that why isn't there someone out here right now going through the database of who was convicted of a felon, uh, a felony and who are now off of probation and parole, who are done with everything and going to get them registered? Why do we not have that? That is something that we need to be doing. That is a service that needs to be out there because they have a voice. They are a part of society. They matter. Their voices matter, and especially if they're wrongfully convicted. Right now, under the current law, you can only be exonerated and, ex and, and get your record expunged if you were exonerated via DNA evidence. That's the only way? That, to me, is scary as well. Why are we talk about criminal justice reform? This is a part of criminal justice reform. It's not worrying about those who go in. It's not just worrying about those who are already there. It's about those who have been there giving them the other opportunity, the equal opportunity to prosper that we will give someone else. And there's always hope. There Representative, is always thank hope. you very much for coming thank in. You. It was a pleasure. Our thanks to State Representative Lakeisha Bosley and our thanks to you for joining us. Please see us back here next week for another edition of the JACO Report. See you then.